In paragraph 1380 of the Catholic Catechism, it talks about how the Eucharist is the way that Christ remains present in his church. And so the Eucharist is essentially the host that is consecrated. So it's the wafer that is turned into the physical body and blood of Christ. So Eucharistic adoration is essentially when that body of Christ is placed on display for people to be able to come to, to pray before and kneel before and venerate as the physical body of Christ. So in paragraph 2715 of the Catechism, it talks about how this is an opportunity for contemplation. It's this area that we can go and we can have this gaze of faith where Um, St. Ignatius, he says, he looks at me and I look at him and to know the interior knowledge of Christ. So we can actually go before the blessed sacrament and pray and become one with Christ and, and look upon him as who we know him to be. So when we look at the debate against Eucharistic adoration, it would be a debate against the Eucharist in general, against the body of Christ, which would be it's just a wafer. You're bowing before a wafer. You're making an idol. You're doing these things when God is really what's to be honored. And essentially, so we know that God judges based off of knowledge and based off of experiences. We know that God knows the heart and he's the only one who can truly condemn somebody and know, no, your intentions were evil. And okay, your intentions were good. You may have been ignorant about a couple of things, but your intentions were good. So when we start to look at Eucharistic adoration, we look at this opportunity, somebody may look at it and say, you're bowing before a wafer. But for me, when I bow before that wafer, I'm bowing before the physical body of Christ, which is what he taught us in John 6 when he says, this is my body, this is my blood. He says this is his physical presence and it's how he remains present with his church today. And he gives us the privilege of sitting directly with him in order to pray with him. So somebody can look at it and say, you're bowing before a wafer, but guess what? Okay, say I'm wrong. Say it is just a wafer. God knows my intentions. God knows that I believe that Christ, his only son, who Christians as a universal being, states Christ was God's only son. So say... You know, like, I believe that Christ says, this is my body. So I am bowing before Christ's body. I'm not bowing before a wafer. And if I have to go before God one day, which I will, we all will, he will look at me and say, you know what? You had a misunderstanding of what was actually taught. Like, that really was a wafer. But you know what? You thought it was the body of Christ and you honored it in such a reverence that I respect that and I am going to honor your salvation. Whereas, you know, if it, if it is just a wafer and say that's the reason somebody is like pushed away from going to Eucharistic adoration or taking the Eucharist in general, then God will also judge that and be like, well, I understand that you respected me to the extent that you didn't want to bow before a wafer. So I am going to honor your ignorance. So it's this whole thing of God has sympathy and God has empathy against and toward what it is that we believe, whether it's out of ignorance, whether it's out of experiences, whatever it may be. But in the Catholic faith, where we do believe that it is the body and blood of Christ, we can say we are bowing before the body of Christ. We are sitting and gazing at Christ so that we may experience this interior knowledge that Christ does have to offer and that he is physically present within the church. Um, If you look at paragraph 2715, I mean, there's a whole paragraph within what St. Ignatius said about the interior knowledge of Christ. So I recommend going and looking that up. Um, And actually, the quote that's here, it's in paragraph 1418. Pope Paul VI He said, to visit the Blessed Sacrament is a proof of gratitude, an expression of love, and a duty of adoration toward Christ our Lord. 
So it takes 168 people to make perpetual adoration a thing. That's when a chapel is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week with a blessed sacrament exposed for people to come before. And basically every person volunteers for one hour and you go and you are present with the Lord because the Lord should never be alone. And it's to protect the Lord. It's to honor him. And so it takes 168 people because there are 168 hours in a week. So if you don't have a holy hour signed up, I want to recommend to you, look for it. There's going to be a perpetual adoration chapel in your city. I mean, the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in Wisconsin have had it going since 1878. That's 138 years that they've had a perpetual adoration chapel going. So it's possible. There's one near you. I know in Kalamazoo we have St. Monica's, and that's our perpetual adoration chapel. So find it, go to it, sign up for a holy hour, and do it once a week. Go for it. Do it. It will change your spiritual life, I assure you. I hope that you guys all have a blessed Sunday, and thank you for watching. I will see you again next week. God bless.